gosh, I hope this is good. I would drink this. challenge. Each competitor has received five delicious single origin coffees from our friends at Intelligentsia Coffee. Using at least three of the coffees, the baristas have to create their very own blend concept. They'll be judged on flavor, balance, synergy, and overall cup quality. So who's judging this week? Hi, my name is Christina Jackson. I'm retail manager at Intelligentsia Coffee in Boston. So one of my favorite things about blends is an evenness in the balance, a synergy between acidity and body and aftertaste, especially as the coffee cools. As far as making blends goes, this is the first time I've, I've ever made a blend. It's just, it blows my mind. The whole process of making and choosing specifically how to build on your palate. So I guess my approach to this, since I've never made a blend and we want the end result to be a balanced cup of coffee. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna cup all of these coffees and I'm going to go over the acidity of the coffees, the balance of the coffees as is, the sweetness and the aftertaste and the body of these coffees. We have Ethiopia, one of my favorite. And the flavor notes are cranberry, nectarine, and lime. There's a taste. There's a taste there that I, I know. I know it's logged into my memory bank and I don't know what it is. Woo, we have this coffee from Mexico. Yay, my hometown. Woo, this is from Oaxaca. Oaxaca, I think, is the best state of Mexico. They have the best food, the best mezcal, and Probably to this coffee too. This one was really bright. I have a lot of um, like sweet lemon in my aftertaste. Uh, Costa Rican coffee that has notes of honey, tamarind, and green grape. I love tamarind, so I think I'm gonna definitely try to use this. Mm. Burundi, nectarine, turbinado, sugar, and apple. It's like a berry, um, black currant, bl blueberry flavor. that Burundi, it doesn't taste right. Something's off about it. I don't know. A Colombian with the flavor notes being golden raisin, apple, and molasses. These like heavy chocolate cacao, like I don't know, sort of party in your mouth. To make a balanced blend, um, you need a base, a sweet base, which I'm thinking is Ethiopian, which love so maybe a ratio of like 30 to 40 percent of that i feel like everyone's coffee is going to have the ethiopian in it because it's just so damn good i was thinking about one of my favorite books that it's called <laughs> the open veins of latin america so i was like i'm gonna use only coffees from latin america so my plan was to cup different ratios of the mexican costa rican and colombian coffees to see which one i like the best i ended up liking my third cup well, that was really weird, actually. The Costa Rican, the Colombian, and the Mexico, or the Costa Rican, the Colombian, and the Ethiopian. Or I could do the Colombian, the Mexico, or the Ethiopian, or the Costa Rica, the Mexico, and the Ethiopian. I, I don't think, I think the coffee I'm definitively gonna keep in there is the Colombian coffee. With my components, I'll focus on these three parts. For the base, heavy. So something like a Brazilian nutty uh, balanced one. And then you gotta have like that mid palette, that bridge that takes you from the first portion of the sip to the last portion of that taste profile. Um, so they can do it at Colombian for that because I had a really nice just like flow to it. It just kind of moved very nicely. Two and a half. 15% Colombia inner blend. 15%, we have 70% Costa Rica and 15% Mexico. This is gonna be really good. I feel like 
these flavors balance so so good and I can't wait for my judge to try it. And for the high note, that like finishing piece of it, the cowbell according to Holly, which I absolutely love. I'm gonna call it that forever. Um, between 30 to 50% of that, and I'm gonna use the Mexican, I'm thinking. I used cupping spoons to measure out the percentages initially, and then I actually used the percentages to make an actual blend with the beans. Oh, I really like that. I think I'm just gonna stick with my, my very first round, the one that I thought was the most tasty by tasting all of the coffees, which was the Costa Rican, Colombian, and Ethiopian at an equal ratio, uh, three-part ratio. I have decided that the Costa Rica, the Colombia, and the Burundi are my winners. Um, I like the sweetness and the acidity of all of them, and I think together they can make a, a sum that's greater than its parts. And now it's time to decant and serve. So, now that Christina has cupped all the blends, let's find out who made a coffee worthy of straight sixes and who probably would have been better off serving single origin. Who do you think? It's a Costa Ethiopian coffee made with love, just like babies, you know? Emily, your coffee had a lot of potential. There was a pointed cranberry acidity that really grabbed my attention, but it never really gained too much complexity as the coffee cooled. My biggest issue with this coffee was that the acidity was unbalanced and it took over the more gentle complexities within the cup. Yay, I just finished my blend. Inspired by this book from Eduardo Galeano, The Open Veins of Latin America. A coffee that talks about cheap labor for quality coffee and the exploitation of the coffee farms in Latin America. Paula, the most interesting aspect of your coffee was the aroma. I got notes of caramel, candy, and honey, just straight up sweet. The body was generally rounded and soft, but the coffee got a little bit salty as it cooled, and the aroma didn't quite translate into the flavors. So this is my blend, gingerbread blend. The taste is prune, blueberry, and butterscotch. Ken, your coffee was really interesting. It was the most well-balanced out of the group, but not super complex. I would have loved to get a more present acidity out of this cup. This is my blend. It's called, it takes three to tango. <laughs> this is a coffee about threesomes. Miranda, this was a really great blend. This is something that I like to call chuggable. I got some great flavor notes of juicy red apple, brown sugar, and I got a very present Meyer lemon aroma. My only negative is that the coffee got a little bit dry as it cooled. His fingers crossed it's somewhat palatable. <laughs> and the winner for this week is La Crista. Well done. So this was definitely my top pick. I got hints of applesauce, graham cracker, and red pear. The body was warm and round. It had a smooth, creamy finish, kind of like oat milk. I would say that fresh apple bite of the Colombian coffee paired with that smooth honey finish from the Mexican coffee worked in tandem for an awesome blend. I am so surprised and excited. I'm glad that it was enjoyed. I'm stunned and excited. That challenge was so exciting for me. Never thought about blending before and glad that I got a chance. Congratulations, baristas, and well done to all of you. I hope you'll continue on your journey to make extraordinary coffee. La Crista is our blend master with five out of five. That moves her up to 16 points. Emily and Ken maintain their lead, but only by a hair. With only three episodes left till the final, who do you think will be crowned the champion of the Barista League Online? And who might have a trick or two up their sleeve? We'll see. Shout out to all of our baristas and a huge thank you to Christina Jackson and the team at Intelligentsia. I'm feeling a little inspired to create my own blend. How about you? What do you look for in a great blend? Leave a note in the comments. 
And next week on the Barista League Online, it's the Latte Art Challenge. It may not be spring, but it's always tulip season behind the bar. So make sure you're subscribed and turn on notifications so you don't miss out. See you then.